Hi, I'm Rachel Koble, and welcome to the University of Iowa College of Dentistry. In the application process, I learn a lot about our applicants, um, which is my privilege and joy, but I think it's fair to share a little bit about myself and my background. So I have a background in psychology, I have a master's degree in higher education student affairs administration, and I've worked on a couple different campuses before arriving here to the University of Iowa College of Dentistry. I've been in my role since 2015, and I love what I do and um, the chance I have to interact with prospective students. So what I plan to chat about today includes why Iowa? That's the question, right? Um, also to cover some really basic application lingo that I think is pertinent and important for you to know, some tips, some things to know before you apply, the actual application process, and then um, we'll dabble into how to make your application unique. So let's kick it off with why Iowa? I think it's so important for you to know that the past several years, the University of Iowa College of Dentistry has seen over 164,000 patients. This is a huge volume of patients. It's patients coming from every county in the state of Iowa and beyond to receive care from our students and from our faculty. And at Iowa, you are not responsible for finding your own patients. We take care of that for you. We have a one to three faculty to student ratio. At Iowa, it is so easy to get to know faculty as well as your classmates. You'll see if you get a chance to visit us that our simulation clinic is set up pod style. And so what happens is it makes it really easy for you to get to know the other four classmates within your pod. Um, it's, it's super easy to develop community from that uh, right out of the gate. We also um, have faculty that are known um, for bringing in treats on exam day. We have uh, one specific instructor that's known for baking your pie of choice if you are the top test performer and bringing that into class. Um, so our faculty are welcoming, they're warm, and they want you to be successful. At Iowa, we care about our students. We offer free tutoring for any student that wants or needs. So you could be struggling with a course and you can come into my office, the student affairs office, and we will connect you with a tutor or you could be really excelling and just want a little extra finesse. Um, either way is great, um, but we will connect you with a tutor and the tutors are upper class students that have successfully completed the course. And what I think is great is that it goes full circle. Those tutors receive compensation from the college and you get all the help you might need. We have over 10 student organizations. These range the gamut from uh, specialty areas of interest to um, faith-based organization to service organizations. Um, and the norm at Iowa is that our students are engaged and involved. And it's another way to get to know our collegiate community as well as serve. We have mentorship communities. What mentorship communities are is we partner a D1, D2, D3, D4, and a faculty member together. And the expectation is that these groups meet twice a semester, though many groups meet much more frequently. And it's a chance for you um, as a D1 student to get to know upper class students and faculty members, um, to ask questions, to engage, and to, um, again, develop community. In 2016, the college completed a $65 million renovation project. And um, what that means is that our clinics are shiny, they are bright and brand new, and the college literally has walls of windows. Um, we think sunlight is important, and so we want to offer that to you um, in our simulation clinic and in the clinic areas. And then um, what Iowa is known for in the dental world is our rotational curriculum. And so for years, Iowa was the only dental school in the nation that offered all of the specialty areas here in-house. And um, what happens is as a student with us um, in your, th throughout your experience here, you will get the chance to rotate through all the specialty areas that we offer. And so um, these are the specialty areas that we offer. And um, this, this next slide, as you can see, demonstrates how you'll progress through our curriculum. So as a D1 student, you will start with us taking science classes and that curriculum will quickly escalate. And what will happen in about December is that you will start flossing your classmates and they'll start flossing you. And as you progress throughout the spring semester of your D1 year, what will happen is that at the end of the year, you will get to see your very first patient. Now, the college can provide that patient for you. Some students like to bring in their mom or significant other or a sibling, whatever you prefer, um, but you'll see your own patient for a basic cleaning and examination at the conclusion of your D1 year. 
Your D2 year, you'll still be going to class um, and you'll continue to escalate in, um, in, in your patient care experiences. You'll start to dabble in some operative dentistry. And the D3 year is where um, students really live for. This is where you really kick off and, and start to rotate through the specialty offerings. And so what happens is we put you into smaller cohorts with your classmates and you will rotate um, for about five to ten weeks through each of the different specialty areas. And so and what will happen is that you might start off with pediatric dentistry and um, so you'll be working with infants to teenagers for that duration of time and then perhaps your next specialty after that will be oral surgery. And all you'll do all day long is pull teeth and, and conduct oral surgery. And then the next specialty area will happen. And um, Iowa believes in learning by doing, and we think that this is a great uh, setup of our curriculum so that you are immersed and engaged and rotating through getting a plethora of experiences. And then your fourth year wraps up where you are in a comprehensive clinical experience. And so patients will show up and you will provide care for them. And there's a, a smattering of classroom experiences, particularly our, class, uh, our practice management classroom experience occurs in the D4 year. Um, but what will also occur is that you will spend five weeks outside of the College of Dentistry. Um, you're getting ready um, to, to fly from the nest, right? And so what happens is you'll practice underneath another dentist. Um, you get to rank order where you'd like to go. And so some students use that as an adventure. We have a, a location in Alaska that some students get excited about. And other students use it as perhaps an unofficial uh, interview experience to go to a demographic or community where they might like to practice in the future. So um, you get to have say in where you'd like to be. Now, I think it's important to talk about some basic lingo um, when we're talking about the application process, just to make sure everybody's on the same page. And so what I wanna share with you is um, ADEA, the American Dental Education Association. This is the parent umbrella over dental schools and the application process. And ADEA offers fantastic resources. Um, if you give that a Google, um, you can find uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of preparation materials for you. The next one on the list here is the dent pin. Now, this is something that you apply for in order to take the DAT, the dental admissions test. Now, you can, you can think about this like the ACT or the SAT, which you would have taken in high school. It's a test that has different topical areas that you're tested over, which coincidentally are our prerequisites, which we'll talk about in just a moment. And then this last, um, this last acronym I want to cover is called ADSAS. It's A-A-D-S-A-S. It stands for the Associate American Dental School Application Service. I know it's a mouthful. It's okay if you mispronounce it. Um, but this is the application service that most dental schools in the United States take part in. And what happens is that it makes your life as an applicant easy. So it's a centralized application, so you just fill out your information one time, you check which schools you want to get your content, and then um, the application service, AdSAS, distributes it to the schools you've designated that you want to apply to. All right, some application tips. So I highly suggest that you apply early. Now, um, what this means is that every June is when the application opens for submission. The application at SAS, it tends to um, first become available to applicants in mid-May. So that means from mid-May until June, you have a few weeks to take your time, to upload your information, to read through it really thoroughly. And if you are able to do that, I highly recommend that you schedule time um, to do that. The average application is anywhere from 30 to 60 pages in length. So it's, it's a beast to complete and it can take significant time. Um, but I suggest that when the submission date arrives that you are ready and that you submit on day one if you're able. Now, um, I also recommend that in addition to completing, submitting your application, that you have every item complete. And what this is, it's your DAT. It's three letters of evaluation minimum. You can have a total of four at maximum. So you wanna have all of those items together ready to submit 
when you can. Now the date varies each year, which is why I'm not pinpointing an exact date. It depends on how the calendar falls. Um, but you can find that date on Adia's website. I also recommend that you are honest in your application, that you read the instructions thoroughly. Um, I can always tell when someone has not read the instructions when they include their high school information. Um, the instructions clearly state that the clock, be the clock begins once you're in college. And so though I'm sure that you had wonderful high school experiences, unfortunately, um, we ask that you don't include those, that you just include once you have begun college to the present. You know, applying can be stressful. It takes a lot of time. It takes cash. Um, it takes planning. Um, and so I recommend that you surround yourself with people that will remind you of your worth. Um, surround yourself with individuals that are going to support you and encourage you and remind you that you have great purpose. And then again, apply early. There are significant advantages to candidates to get their application in right from the get-go. All right, before you apply, some important things to know. Um, I've listed out Iowa's prerequisites here. They are similar to many of the other dental schools in the United States, but take a look at those thoroughly. And then this is Rachel Koble's recommended timeline. There are a lot of different ways to do this, but what I recommend is that your freshman, sophomore, and junior year of college, you are taking prerequisite classes, you're getting involved in dentistry, you're starting to shadow, maybe you're in your campus's pre-dental club, and you're also getting involved in other campus and community experiences. Then over winter break of your junior year, what I think is ideal is most, most schools have a schedule where you wrap up your finals in December, and then you probably have about a month off. Um, and so if you celebrate holidays, do that with your family, and then devote the remainder of your winter break to studying hard, and this is assuming that you have most of the prerequisites done, but study hard for a few weeks, really devote time to it, and then before classes begin in that spring semester, take the DAT. Now the reason why I recommend this is because the DAT has a couple of rules you need to be aware of. One of, the, one of those rules is that you can only take the DAT three times. The other rule that is important to know is that you have to wait 90 days between test taking periods. And so if you are like me, I'm not a great test taker, so I prefer to have a buffer. And so if you take the DAT in January, you know, mid-January, right before classes begin in your spring semester, if you take it and you do well, it's done. You can cross it off your list. If you don't do as you had hoped, it still gives you 90 days to re-strategize, to recoup, and to take another crack at it in May, potentially after finals are done again and before that June submission date opens. So you don't have to do that. You only need one great set of scores. So if you feel like you want, um, just want to take it at the conclusion of your junior year, you know, in May, that's great. Some candidates that I encounter perhaps have some AP credit or they're a little bit ahead of the game. Some folks take it in the summer after their sophomore year. So there are a lot of different strategies and avenues to how you can do this. But I think the important thing to be aware of is that it's helpful to have taken the prerequisites before you take the test. And the exception to this is physics. Physics is not on the DAT. Um, then in the spring of your junior year, I recommend that you start asking for letters of evaluation. Now, um, I have, uh, I'll speak more to this, but I recommend a face-to-face -face conversation where you make this request, as well as coming in with a copy of um, your personal statement and perhaps your resume too. And then the beginning of June is when you'll submit your ADSAS application. All right, so um, I've talked about the DAT, but what happens is you register for that dent pin, you apply to take the DAT, and then to take the DT, you're going to go um, to a testing center. It's called a Promes Prometric Testing Center. And um, you have to schedule this in advance. If you need to change the date of your DAT, there is a fee associated with that. So um, be strategic when you're planning that. Make sure that it aligns with other things you might have going on in your study schedule as well. And um, do some research in advance. I don't want this to surprise anyone, but you're gonna be scanned down. You'll have to have forms of ID, um, and it's an extensive test. It's a five-hour test. 
Um, so be prepared, chat with other pre-dental students that have already taken the DAT um, and they'll have lots of great advice to offer. Now the actual application. All right, it's called AdSAS. And um, before you hit the submit button, I advise that you do some research to see all the different categories that are on the application. And so one of those things is gonna be a personal statement. Um, I think it's helpful to take some time and write and rewrite and brainstorm what you wanna say in that personal statement. Um, I think it's also helpful to spend time looking at the different dental schools that you might be interested in. Now, ADEA, the American Dental Education Association, they have a great resource. It's called the Dental School Explorer, and it compares and contrasts all 67 dental schools in the United States, and it allows you to see where are the different class sizes, where are they located, um, how many in-state and how many out-of-state students do they accept. So um, you can find that on ADEA's website, and it's a great resource I highly recommend. Um, and then um, something else that I think is important to know is that you are going to be required to submit a transcript from every institution you've attended to add SAS. So be thinking through, you know, did you take an AP class in high school? Did you take a, a class at a community college over a summer? And just be mindful that you'll have to submit information from those schools. All right, so on the application, it's gonna ask you about your background. So um, your address, it's gonna ask you some family information. Um, particularly what hangs some candidates up is their family income level. So that's a conversation you might need to have um, with your support or caregivers. There's also some qualitative components to the application um, that include writing out different awards, honors, um, your, your dentistry experience, your shadowing. Um, something that is fairly new to the AdSAS application is the um, delineation of was it an in-person shadowing experience or a virtual shadowing experience. You'll write about extracurricular, volunteer, work experience, research, and then um, academic enrichment. And what this means is, um, you know, did you participate in a summer experience at a dental school? Did you tutor? Did you um, attend perhaps a conference? Those might be applicable experience to include under academic enrichments. And so this is a great point in time to let your personality shine. I think half the battle is being memorable, right? On any given year, there's 12,000 applicants to dental school and about 6,000 will be admitted. And uh, this is Rachel Coble soapbox, but I tell you what, I have never gone to a dentist or a doctor's office and said, what was your class rank or what was your GPA? You know, I, that's not what I care about. I continue to see my caregivers, my doctors, my dentists, my healthcare professionals, because I feel wanted and comfortable. They make conversation with me. They, I feel like they care about me. And so I would urge you as a prospective student to flex what you're passionate about here. You know, if you are in your campus water ski club, Tell us about that. If you are passionate about knitting, include that in your application if you're in the knitting club. Um, those are things that make you memorable and it's also down the line, those are the, the things, the conversations that your future patients are going to enjoy having with you. Your patients probably aren't concerned that the technical name for a cavity is a carry. They're probably not concerned about that. But what they, are concerned with, do you wanna chat with them about how their child performed at the Friday night high school football game, um, or your involvement in the Parent Teacher Association, or whatever it might be within the community. So shine, show us. And I think that there is oftentimes this misperception that everything on your application needs to be related to dentistry or related to science. And while that is valuable, and we love to hear about those experiences, I wanna tell you that from Iowa's perspective, you can tell us all of your involvements on your campus and community. We wanna know what you're passionate about. All right, also on your application, there is a query that asks you about your manual dexterity. So your hand-eye coordination, and I see candidates write anything from golfing to calligraphy to doing makeup and nails. Um, so whatever that looks like for your background, um, tell us about it. Um, and then there's your personal statement and you get 4,500 characters to write anything you want. And um, I have a lot I could say to this, but I will leave it at that. You can find some 
great advice online at the University of Iowa and perhaps at other campuses too. We have a wonderful course that's designed to help students prepare personal statements for graduate school, which I, I highly recommend. And then your letters of evaluation. I tell you what, Iowa is your friend in so many ways. Um, Iowa does not dictate who authors your letters. We say whoever knows you best outside of a relative is who we want to hear from. And so many schools will delineate and say, we want to hear from a dentist and a science instructor and the president. Iowa doesn't do that, um, though you are certainly welcome to include dentists and um, science instructors. And if you can get a letter from the president, that's amazing. But um, whoever knows you best outside of a relative is who we want to hear. And I think that letters that are most impactful are when the authors of those letters can speak to your character and when they can cite specific examples of how they have seen your character shine. All right, uh, some quantitative components include your transcripts. Um, you know, I, I have heard some great advice from candidates. Yes, you have to send your transcripts into AdSAS, but it's also helpful to have a copy of your transcripts for you yourself to reference. Um, and then you'll be inserting your grades. Now, it's something for you to do some research on and just to be aware of, you can self-enter your grades and your classes, or you can pay a DIA, uh, uh, that you can pay AdSAS um, to enter that information in for you. Um, so uh, do your research to see what option might be the best fit for you. Now, before you apply, I wanna talk dollar signs. The DAT, last I saw was $495 to take, and that's just if you take it one time. To apply to AdSAS is currently $259 for one dental program, and it's $112 for every additional dental school that you want to apply to. Now, I wanna be clear, both the DAT and AdSAS have scholarship opportunities. They're called fee waivers. Um, and I um, can speak, I'm more, more comfortable speaking to the AdSAS fee waivers, but they are available on a first come, first serve basis. So do your research, check that out to see if that applies to you. So I'm not great at mental math, so I did the math for you. If you take the DAT once and you apply to one dental school, you're looking at $754. Now, the average applicant applies to 10 dental programs. You could apply to all 67 if you want, if time and money is no object, or you could apply to just one. Um, but oftentimes candidates try to cast their net wide. And so as you can see, I did the math here. If you apply to 10 different dental programs and you take the DAT once, you're looking at just over $1,700. And that's not counting travel costs. If you need to travel for an interview, if you need to purchase professional clothes, if you have a hotel stay, or any study prep that you might choose to purchase for the DAT. Now, um, when I think about this number, and when I think about where my bank account was as a college student, this would not have been feasible for me. And so, for those of you out there that maybe are thinking, I, I can't do this, I again want to stress, reach out to me. I'm happy to connect with you and chat with you about the fee waivers and scholarships that are available to apply. I also want to stress that there are a number of free DAT resources that you might be able to locate from your library or perhaps even from upper class dental students that have resources they're happy um, to give away and provide. Now, as far as the timeline goes, um, as I mentioned, AdSAS, it opens in May, submission begins in June, and um, after you hit the submit button, AdSAS states that it will take four to six weeks to verify your application. What this means is they're fact checking your transcripts. Frequently, I see verification processes happen much sooner than that. The fastest I have seen it is within 24 hours. But I want you to be aware as a candidate, schools aren't just taking their sweet time um, trying to string you along, oftentimes we're waiting for your transcripts to be processed. And so the sooner that you hit the submit button and have all your ducks in a row, the DAT and your transcripts and your letters of evaluation, the sooner you're going to hear from Iowa. And then what happens is our admissions committee reviews your content 
and then hopefully you get an interview invitation. And then what happens is that Iowa plays by the rules. Adia, Adia sets these time frames and they set a date in December every year. It's usually towards the beginning of December when dental schools can begin to tell candidates that they have been admitted, okay? So, um, so what will happen is that if you apply in June, you hit the submit button and everything is in order, it won't be until mid-July-ish, four to six weeks for that verification process when Iowa will be able to review your application. We won't touch it until ADSAS has blessed it and said, yes, everything is in order. So if we get your application in mid-July, guess what? Our faculty are on vacation. <laughs> Our admissions committee, they're out doing fun things. This is their, this is their time off um, for many of them. And so it can take a couple of weeks for our admissions committee to make a decision. And so now we're maybe at the end of July or the very beginning of August when candidates will start to hear from Iowa saying, hopefully, that you've been invited for an interview. Now, Iowa um, typically conducts their interviews August, September, October, and November. Um, in the past, we have had anywhere from 10 to 11 interview days where we host about 24 candidates per interview experience. And so what will happen, the perk to applying early, is that you'll hear from us, hopefully with an interview invitation sooner rather than later, and then if you are wise, you will sign up for an early interview date. Now, once again, Iowa is your friend. Um, if you're invited to interview, we will give you our calendar and they're on a first come first serve basis. So you can arrange your schedule, vacation, your class schedule, your work schedule. And what will happen is that we will host a, a couple of interview days and then behind closed doors, our admissions committee is going to start to make decisions. Now, Iowa has 80 in a class every year. And so, as you can see, statistically speaking, the sooner you interview, the more seats there are available. If you apply later or you choose to interview at a later date, shoot, there might only be a handful of spots left in our class and it becomes much more competitive the longer that you wait. So that is one of the reasons why I highly recommend that you apply early. Now, how it happens. Um, so, at Iowa, we utilize a holistic review of our applicants. So that means we're gonna look at all of it. Yes, your grades, your DAT scores, but also your involvements, um, your volunteer experiences, your shadowing, your essay, your letters of evaluation. We wanna see it all. And so what's gonna happen is our committee will review it and um, you're going to hear one of three messages from us. You'll either hear that you've been denied, and if that's the case, the road stops for you for that cycle, or you'll hear you have been put on hold a fancy way of that is saying deferred. Or the third message you'll hear is we want to interview, come interview at Iowa. So if you're deferred, you are just gonna wait and check your email faithfully. Make sure you're checking your spam folders, your junk folders. If you are invited to interview, you'll interview with us, our admissions decision will make some decisions, and then in December, you will hopefully receive an offer of admission. Now, I think it's really important to stay organized. And so this is uh, just a little resource that I put together, but if you are applying to multiple programs, you're gonna want to keep track of the names of the schools, contact information for the director of admissions, any usernames or passwords that you have to create when you hear from schools, any expectations that they might have from you. Some schools require extra um, what's called a supplemental application or extra fees. So you're just going to want to be really clear and stay organized in whatever way makes sense for you. Now, as I wind down, I want to close my last several slides here on how to be unique. I think that how you handle rejection says a lot about your character. And um, I'm here to remind you there is great purpose for your life, whether that is as a dental student or whether that means you take another year to grow, to strategize and reframe. And at Iowa, I am happy to meet with candidates that are not admitted and want to, want to um, assess and receive some constructive feedback. So please know that I hold that in, in very high light. But um, you can stand out in both negative ways as well as in positive ways. And some of the ways that candidates are memorable in a, in a poor fashion is they um, are needy, selfish, proud, they don't read the instructions, um, not using spell check, 
in your emails or in your application. AdSAS, the application itself does not have spell checks. So I advise that you start, your, start typing your information in a Word document. Um, and uh, using technology at the wrong place, wrong time. I call me old fashioned, but I think it is advantageous if you get an interview experience, you put that phone away, leave it in the car, turn it off so that you're not tempted, so that your full attention and focus is on um, those in front of you. Now you can be unique in a good way as well. Um, be more than your numbers. You are more than that 4.0 and you're more than that GPA that maybe is a little bit lower than you had hoped. Your numbers do not define you. The numbers on the scale, the numbers on your GPA, the number on your DAT, you are more than that. Be transparent. You know, there's no such thing as a perfect application. And um, when applicants are transparent and own to if there's mistakes, if there are any legal indiscretions, poor choices that they might have made, I find at Iowa, our admissions committee, you know, there are people too, they have struggled with a course or they have learned some hard life lessons. If you as a candidate take responsibility and ownership and draw that to light, it's oftentimes met with empathy and with understanding. If you hide it, that's not great. <laughs> so I advise, um, you know, display that elephant that might be in the room, talk about it, um, and, and take ownership if necessary. Be thorough, be involved, um, be known within the college community, and be prepared to, to be able to convey and communicate your values. Who are you? What are you passionate about? What do you stand for? And again, surround yourself with people who understand your worth. All right, the interview at Iowa. Um, if you receive an invitation to interview, you will get um, written instructions um, and, and receive content in advance. I want you to feel confident and prepared. I don't want there to be any surprises. But um, what is gonna happen is that if you're invited to interview at Iowa, we do have a $60 processing fee. So I want you to know about that. And um, we don't have a supplemental application. Again, Iowa is your friend. Um, everything that's on AdSAS is what you have to fill out for Iowa. We will send you details about where to arrive to the dental science building. I'll actually send you a, a picture of our parking lot so you know where to park, you know what. I'll send you a, a photo of what door to enter in, and then I will be there greeting you. So excited to see you face to face. And um, at Iowa, our, our day is about a, I would say about a three quarter of a day experience. And um, what happens is we welcome you, and then we know it's a two-way street. We want you to feel like you are learning about Iowa while we are simultaneously learning more about you. And so you'll be welcomed. You'll hear about our curriculum, financial aid. Um, we do a writing assessment, which I will share more with you if you're invited to interview. And um, we wrap up the day um, with what you can expect from Iowa after the fact. So I do want you to be aware um, if you are interviewing at multiple schools, there's a, a word out there, it's called multiple mini interviews. Iowa doesn't utilize that, but I, I want you to understand what that is. It's essentially speed dating in an interview format. Um, that's the style of it. Um, I also want you to know there are, I have heard of some dental schools doing manual dexterity tests. So just do your research so you understand what the expectations are um, for your interview experience. At Iowa, we used a closed file interview experience because we think that's the most equitable. And so your interviewers will only know your first and last name. They're not gonna know any other information about you. Um, we do a two-on-one experience. We aim to have a faculty and a staff member and you as our candidate. And you get 15 minutes and um, we have some, some formal questions that we ask you and then we have some more informal kinds of questions we ask. And when that 15 minutes is up, we introduce you to another faculty and another staff member um, for another two-on-one -on -one interview experience. So in total at Iowa, you'll have 30 minutes that you'll interview with four members of our college community. Then my suggestions as you prepare for an interview, go to your career center. If you're a current college student, there are some great in-person and virtual resources. Practice timing yourself. I, I joke, I am more of an introvert and my husband is a raging extrovert and so, um, when we professionally have been preparing for interviews within our marriage, my husband as an extrovert, he processes out loud. And so he tends to overshare as he is thinking through and responding versus as an introvert, I tend to undersell myself. It's like pulling teeth to get me to respond. 
And so be aware of how, of what your own tendencies might look like. And in a time setting, you, you certainly want to share adequate answers, but you don't want to overshare um, within that time so that you make sure you get through all of the questions. Um, and again, uh, don't utilize technology during your interview experience and um, do whatever you need to do to come in confident and poised. At Iowa, we are ecstatic to have you. And so the whole day is structured to be full of peace and ease and excitement. Now, this concludes my presentation. I want you to know that Iowa is cheering for you. I'm cheering for you. If you have additional questions, I um, am hosting, I plan to host additional webinars that will be posted um, on our website. I also have phone consults that you're welcome to sign up for, and I've listed my email address here. Again, I'm Rachel Coble. I'm the Director of Dental Student Admissions here at the University of Iowa College of Dentistry. We can't wait to see your application. Thanks. Go Hawks.